I don't know if getting an extra $100, $200, $300 back into your household every month will benefit you, but if so, keep listening. I'm Will Frazier, your credit expert, and today we're going to be talking about refinancing your car and potentially saving hundreds monthly and even thousands yearly. All this without having to pay for your car for a longer period of time. We're also going to cover a great tool to use to find the best lenders for your refinance for your car, as well as what you need to pinpoint on your credit report to ensure that you get the best rate possible because there's a special credit score out there that's going to affect you when you're trying to do a refinance and we're going to talk about that too now almost everybody has a car and when people's finances get a little bit tight and they're trying to find ways to cut down on their spending to try to save some money or bring some more money back into the household one thing that most people overlook is their car payment which is usually the second biggest bill that you have coming out of your household income and I've seen people overpay for their car note because of their credit on average about $300, sometimes less, sometimes more, but still that's a lot of money that you could be saving or using for something else. Now you just imagine what you could do with an extra $300 or more coming into your household every month. Not to mention improving your credit can help you save money in a lot of other areas for things that you already pay for. But first, let's get into some of the things that you can do to try to save money on your car payment. Now, over here on the experience site, you can see when it comes to trying to lower your monthly car payment, they recommend about three different things here. They say uh, lower your expectations as far as the kind of car that you get. As far as, you know, if you try to get a brand new car, luxury car, those things can cost a lot more monthly naturally. So they're saying, you know, you can watch it in that area. And also they say shop around for auto loans, which we're going to give you a tool to try to help to do that. But the number one thing that they mentioned here is bump up your credit score you can see that they say a credit score below 600 might mean an interest rate of around 11 percent but i can tell you that under 600 i've seen people get you know anywhere from 17 percent 18 percent 25 percent at the most so it can really get costly when you have a lower credit score and you're trying to refinance your car and of course when you first purchase the car that's when you probably got hit with this high interest rate and your credit score may not have been in the perfect place then but as long as you get it to a better place now then you can start to try to save that money that we we're talking about and again when it comes to how much you can save by refinancing your car it's going to come down to a lot of different factors so it's always going to vary from person to person your credit score determines things like your interest rate uh, how much you'll have to put down on the car as well as of course your monthly car payment and there are other factors that go into that like how old the car is how many miles they have on the car all of those things are a factor in how much you end up paying for this car now that tool that I wanted you to be aware of to try to help you with securing the lenders that are going to refinance this card for you is going to be super money now super money is a very good tool to use they have a lot of information and they have a lot of different uh, product offerings to try to help you secure the best deal for you no matter what you're trying to do when it comes to financing or getting credit now you can see here you can find the best auto loan or best refinancing options with them loans up to a hundred thousand rates starting as low as 1.5 percent and checking your rates won't affect your credit score which is another great benefit because a lot of times you don't want to get that inquiry just to see if you can get something and possibly get denied this won't affect your credit score and you can still see if you can qualify for one of the options they have and as you can see it only takes a few seconds to actually get an offer you can see they cover different loan types personal loans business loans student loans and things other than that but today we're focusing on again that refinance option and again how it works is you apply online and just a few seconds you choose the best offer rate terms payment and all of that stuff that you feel like is good for you and your situation and then you get your money you receive your loan proceeds and then you're able to refinance your car now you'll fill out one form you'll end up getting offers from multiple lenders or seeing what offers work for you and your credit situation with this lenders are competing for your business so basically it gives you the best opportunity to try to get a lower rate now here's an example of how you get to see the different details on each lender and get all the information before you make a decision and you can see here they have a various different uh, auto lenders for this refinancing opportunity here you can see the credit score range that this particular lender usually looks at you can see you know reviews if this is recommended from other people that have used them you can see the different loan amount options that they have the different rates 
benefits that you can get from them, the different terms, and any additional details that you may need to know like late fees or prepayment fees, and you can apply. Also, getting your rates is easy. You can click right there to get your rates, but you see they have all of this different information on all these different lenders. So again, they're trying to make sure that you're in the know and you can make the best decision versus having one option to choose from that you may not have that much information about. Now, as you can see here, they offer even more details on these things, different key takeaways like with this lender, APR starting at 1.9%, vehicle types that they accept. You can see here that they do motorcycles, boats, RVs, ATVs, cars, and trucks. So again, they really do give you a lot of details on each of these different uh, lenders that are out there. So now what do you need to be taken into consideration when you're about to actually do a refinance on your car? Again, a main thing is gonna be your credit score. The best rates are reserved for the highest FICO scores. So the better your credit score, the better the rates that you're gonna be able to get and it's going to improve the overall terms that you also get on this refinance as well. You also wanna look at the remaining balance that you have on this car. And again, I said I was going to mention to you what you can do to not pay on this car for as long. So let's say that you had the car for about a seven year term when you originally got the car and now it's two years later. So you're thinking about refinancing the car since your credit score is better, but you don't want to be paying for another seven years on the car. So all you have to do to make sure that you don't pay for an extremely long period of time after you've already put in some time on the long term is when you refinance the car, instead of selecting another seven year term to try to lower the interest rate because your credit score is better, your interest rate should be lower which will help to lower the payment already for you. So you should just select five years since you already had five years left on your previous loan that you had. That way you still have the same amount of time to pay it off, but you're also gonna be paying less on the car because you lowered your interest rate because you increased your credit score. Now, of course, you could still go lower, like go to a four year or a three year if you wanna try to pay it off a little bit faster, or you can you know, increase it back to seven if you wanna have an additional factor to lower your payment because of course, the longer you spread it out, the lower your payment will be. But then, of course, you would still be locking yourself in for a longer term to pay it off, which might not be what you want to do. Now, you also want to keep into consideration that they do origination fees on some of these refinance loans. So that's something that you would have to take into consideration and the cost of that origination fee for the loan the age of your car and the miles on your vehicle, because the older the vehicles and the higher the mileage, the less a lender will want to cover on the car. So basically your car could be worth a certain amount, but a lender will have a certain value that they're willing to extend out a loan on a vehicle that's so old that it has so many high miles because it's closer to the point of, you know, breaking down and having something major happen to it the older it is so the less lenders are usually going to finance on an older vehicle so you want to make sure that it is more of a newer vehicle or lower miles now the timing of it you need to make sure that you've you know paid on the car for at least six to twelve months before you try to refinance because most lenders won't refinance a car that's kind of newer that you just ended up getting the loan on this particular car and of course you want to try to pay more when you can because the more you pay besides the regular car note the faster you'll be able to pay off that car and again shop around for options which is what you're going to be using super money for to make sure that you are getting a competitive rate with a good company now i told you i would help you to pinpoint what you need to look at on your credit report in order to make sure that you get the best rate and this is going to be what you need to focus on in order to try to improve your credit if you aren't already where you need to be with your credit score now ideally so that you know what to shoot for you ideally want to be probably at at least about a 680 on most of your credit scores and when i say most of your credit scores i mean on the big three credit bureaus which are experian equifax and transunion and i say that because you don't know what credit bureau a specific lender might check so you need to make sure that your credit score is at a high level on all of your credit bureaus so that you can ensure getting the best rate no matter which credit bureau the lender checks now of course ideally it's better to be at at about you know a 720 730 750 or you know as high as it can be but just to set an attainable goal that you can still get a decent rate at we're going to look at about 680. now as far as your credit report goes you want to make sure that you pay close attention to anything that's dealing with a past auto loan that you have had before now the reason for this is because as i mentioned there's a special credit score that affects you when you're trying to refinance a car 
and even when you're trying to purchase a car. So let me break it down for you on how that works. Anytime you apply for anything, you're gonna get a credit score that pops up that's gonna be a certain version of FICO usually, and that's gonna be usually a FICO 8 or a FICO 9. This would be called your base FICO score in whatever version of FICO is being used to check your approval. Now let's say you have a 600 credit score in FICO 8. So what's gonna happen is if you have auto history on your credit report that is negative let's say a repo or repossession or you have a 30-day late payment a 90-day late payment and it's either on a current car that you have or an old car that you have had recently or not too long ago then what's going to happen is your base fico score is going to be altered down because you have negative history on a auto loan and you're trying to get another auto loan right now so this happens, of course, because the lender wants to get the best rating for you based on how you handle car loans to make sure that they are making the best lending decision before they give you a car loan. Now, if you have good history as far as cars in the past and you don't have negative marks like that on cars specifically, then it will alter your base FICO score up to actually help increase your score because you have showed good credit management of auto loans in the past. So with that being said, again, you want to pay very close attention to what's going on with the cars that are on your credit report now of course the first thing you want to do is make sure you obtain your credit report you can always get your credit report for free from annualcreditreports.com sometimes those credit reports can be very long and lengthy so there are also different credit monitoring sites out there where you can actually get your credit reports and it'll look a little bit easier like myscoreiq.com and you can also get FICO scores at those places you have to pay additional money usually to get your scores from the annualcreditreport.com website but after you've obtained your credit report you want to look through all three bureaus so that you can see what is on each of the three bureaus because again your lender might check any of those three bureaus now if you do have negative car history and you also have other negative things on your credit like charge-offs collections things like that you still want to deal with those you can't only focus on the auto part you also need to deal with those other items as well to try to help improve your credit now what you're looking for is any inaccuracies any errors that might be on these accounts on your credit report and you don't want to send a dispute online through credit karma through the credit bureaus what you want to do is you want to actually send in a paper dispute to the credit bureaus because that paper trail is what you want and is what helps get you better results because when you dispute online you usually have limited options on what you can choose to dispute something for and a lot of those options Options won't really help you get good results now the way the laws are set up everything on your credit report is supposed to be 100% accurate and there are several like hundreds of different laws that are out there that can help you when you're trying to dispute things on your credit report but the main one is going to be that accuracy thing and just so you know accuracy doesn't mean is this account yours it means is every piece of information on this account actually accurate so you can look and compare different accounts between the different bureaus see if you know certain dates are wrong certain balances are wrong and those those are things that you can use to dispute when you're creating these disputes that you're going to send on paper now once you've identified these things put them in your dispute letter and sent them off then of course you want to make sure that you wait for the results and see what happened and then the next and most important part is going to be that you need to stay consistent once they come back if they do say that some things were verified you need to press on and continue to work on those obvious errors that they may have said or verified but they haven't actually corrected because a lot of times you have to be consistent and persistent when you're dealing with these disputes and trying to work Work on improving your credit but as long as you do stay consistent and keep working on it then you will see good results and you'll be able to be in a better place to be able to refinance your car and start saving that extra hundred two hundred three hundred dollars every month and use that for something more beneficial to you and your family so i thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and i'll see you guys next time